In this fat girl video, we review how to place a nasogastric feeding tube in your veterinary patient. Nasogastric, NG, or nasoesophageal, and E tubes can be a valuable tool to evaluate in your practice. Although feeding tubes may seem intimidating to place, if you follow some simple guidelines, you can successfully and easily place them in general, emergency, or specialty practice. NG or NE tubes are commonly used in critically ill patients to provide short-term nutritional support, measure gastric residual volumes, help with patient comfort and nausea levels by keeping the stomach empty, and potentially help minimize the risk of regurgitation and secondary aspiration pneumonia. They are often well tolerated and can be simply removed once they are not needed. In Veckerl's experience, cats tolerate these more than dogs. To place an NG tube, first ensure that you are well prepared and have all your supplies ready. This includes an appropriately sized feeding tube, suture, syringes, a 22 or 20 gauge needle, a laryngoscope, a bowl, a needle driver, preparacane, an e-collar, sterile lubrication, sedation, eye lubrication, and potentially flow by oxygen and monitoring devices. As you prepare everything, place a few drops of preparacane into the nostril to allow it time to take effect. Dip the nose upward to allow the anesthetic to coat the nasal mucosa. Light sedation may assist with placement, such as 0.2 mg per kilogram of butorphanol and 0.1 to 0.5 mg per kilogram of midazolam. Try to maximize your sedation by utilizing this for the actual insertion of the NG tube versus initial preparation. To ensure appropriate length of placement, measure the feeding tube from the nostril to the 7th or 8th rib for an NE tube or to the 13th rib for an NG tube, and mark this point on the feeding tube as a guide so you know how far in to insert the tube. Prior to insertion, test the stickiness of the stylet by removing the stylet from the NG tube, flushing saline through the tube, then replacing the stylet. This allows for easier removal of the stylet once it's placed. Lubricate the end of the tube with sterile lubrication. Prepare the patient in sternal recumbency and using short, rapid, intentional movements, insert the tube into the nasal passage toward the ventral meatus while aiming medially towards the pre-marked location. Appropriate placement of the feeding tube should be confirmed by visualization of the tube bypassing the larynx and entering the esophagus on oral exam with a laryngoscope if the patient is adequately sedated, by the presence of negative pressure on aspiration or the presence of gastric fluid, and by confirmation of a lateral radiograph. Ideally, the tube should not be sitting against the wall of the stomach, but rather sit in the lumen to help potentially minimize the risk of occluding the fenestrations of the tube. Once the tube is confirmed to be in the appropriate location, secure the tube with a finger trap suture pattern, starting with stay sutures through the lateral nares. Another stay suture should be placed to secure the tube near the zygomatic arch. Avoid securing the tube too tightly adhered to the face, as it can lead to skin irritation or pressure sores. Also, try to minimize the tube or suture contact with the sensitive whiskers. As a general rule, suction the tube at least every four to six hours to evaluate the patient's gastric motility and emptying. Once the patient is stable, is no longer vomiting or nauseated, and has normal physiological parameters like temperature, blood pressure, perfusion, gut sounds, etc., you can begin with a quarter of the RER and gradually increase the rates as tolerated slowly. As a general rule, NG tubes should not be in for longer than a week as it can lead to nasal irritation and tends not to be well tolerated after that. That said, NG tubes are generally well tolerated and are easy to place and remove. A few last tips. Even if the patient is intubated, you need to verify that the tube is in the esophagus as an endotracheal tube will not fully occlude the tube from entering the trachea. Another tip is it's a common misconception that patients can't eat with an NG tube in place. Don't worry, they can, so continue to offer food, and once the patient is eating well, go ahead and remove the tube. Last tip, oral medications should ideally be avoided through the tube, as it will increase the risk of the tube getting plugged up. If they plug up, try flushing some soda, or pop, as we call it in the Midwest, down the line to unclog it. <laughs> <laughs>